Shalom, shalom. I'm Judah the Shooter. I'm the proud author of The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny, book volume one and book volume two, which can be purchased at propolybook.com. Once again, that's propolybook.com, even if poly isn't your thing. Now, we have a question that is being asked, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, freestyle it. And uh, we're going to deal with it head on real quick. So um, there's a question that is being asked. Let me go ahead and share my screen real quick so we can get some understanding of what is being asked here. Uh, shout out to the sister here, um, Royal Mahogany. I don't know who she is, but she's asking a question. And the question is, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and read the post. Uh, this is what it says. It says, to all my Christians, all right? Can y'all answer something for me? When the God of the Bible said not to put any of the gods before him. Now, I want to pause there real quick. She's referring to the first commandment. All right. So for those of you who have never read the Bible, she's speaking of the Ten Commandments, specifically the first commandments. Uh, first commandment, which is no other gods before me. So let's go back. Um. It says, when the God of the Bible said not to put any of the gods before him, why haven't y'all questioned who are the other gods? Who are the other gods, right, are that he wants to be in front of? This is the question, all right? Um, then she says, who are these other gods that he's in competition with? This is another question. Then she says, uh, why have they not uttered a word against him, but he speaks on them and discredits them just so humans can look to him and him only. Who are these other gods or do y'all not care to go down that rabbit hole in fear that you will go to hell? This is a general and honest question. I would really like to hear from people. Now, I don't know who this sister is, Anybody who personally know me know that I would usually go in, but because this person is being uh, transparent and she says that this is a general honest question, all right, and she really like to hear from people. So, of course, I'll be nice. All right, so we'll go ahead and deal with this. Um, I first want to deal with the first part said to all of my Christians. Um... I'm not in a Christian church. Um, the word Christian is in the Bible three times. Acts 11, 26 will tell you where the disciples were first called Christians in the city of Antioch. Um, Christian is a nickname, all right, that was given to the disciples, which means students, learners, or followers who were Jews. I first want to say this is before I go into the Bible and answer the lady's question. I just want to get this out of the way. But anyway, Acts 11, 26, Acts 26, 28, and, and 1 Peter 4, 16. The word Christian comes from the Hebrew word Meshachiyim. In Hebrew, it means Messianic, so those who follow the Messiah, basically. Acts 24 and 5, you have uh, a man by the name of uh, the Apostle Paul. He was known as a ringleader of the sect, S-E-C-T, which means the group uh, known as the Nazarenes. Why? Because they follow Christ of Nazareth. Uh, Christ was called a Nazarene in uh, Matthew 2 and 23. So I wanted to get it out of the way first. So when I'm saying Christian, I'm not referring to Chris insanity, a.k.a. Christianity. I do not follow that religion. And I'm sure most Christians can't even answer the simple questions that the ladies uh, asking, generally asking. So I want to get that disclaimer out of the way first. I do not uh, follow the Christian church, although I do believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. That's who you know as Jesus the Christ. I do confess him to be my Lord and Savior, but do not confuse me with a person who goes to a Christian church at all. I don't deal with church or religion at all, but that is another topic. If anybody got any questions on that, uh, we can definitely uh, talk about it. So let's go back to uh, the post. So once again, to all my Christians, can y'all answer something for me? When the God of the Bible said not to put any of the gods before him, why haven't y'all uh, questioned who are the other guys that he wants to be in front of? Well, first and foremost, this is a simple question that she's asking. And guess what, guys? It is a simple answer that can be answered. 
So that being said, I first want to go to Psalms first. 96. Psalms 96, verse 4 and 5. First things first, it says, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, for he is to be feared above all gods. All right? He is to be feared above all gods. Here's the first part of the answer. It says, For all the gods of the nations or idols that's what you know about I mean, that's what you call today idolatry but the lord made the heavens so dealing with the first part says dealing with another god that is known as idolatry all right but i'm going to go and answer all the questions let's go to the first part though of the question that she wanted to know because remember she said um uh when the most high said um um no other gods before me so let's deal with that all right, so I do read Hebrew and uh, English as well. Um, so in verse one, it says, By the Bera Elohim et called Havarim Halelamor, which means, And God spake or uttered all these words, uh, all these words saying. This is the verse I want to focus on here. I mean, the next two verses. Aniki Yehovah Elohecha, Asher Zetikameretz, Mizraimi Be Avadim. So I am the Lord your God who have brought you forth from or out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery or the house of bondage. Verse 3 is the verse. It says, So you shall you shall not uh, I'm sorry, you shall shall not, sorry about that, have gods of others al Pinay before me. That's what you know as. But guess what? This word here, Panaya, that's the word that you have there. Um I mean, Al Panaya, this is this word here before me. But in the Hebrew text, that word Panaya comes from the word Panaya or Panim. It means face or in my presence. So let me show you that real quick. All right, let's pull this up real quick. Let's pull, what does that mean? You see face or faces or presence. So I want to deal with this. He's saying, you shouldn't have no other gods in my presence. Don't even have them around me. All right, so I first want to deal with that. When he's saying no other gods before me, most Christians will read that passage and don't fully understand what that actually means. He's specifically saying, look, I don't even want them in my face. Hold on, I had a text message. Let me let them know I'm calling back. Um, while, while, I'm telling, while I'm sending this message, he's saying that he don't want no other gods in his face. All right, at all. Now, I also want to deal with something else. Let's go to here, Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, which reads, it says, but you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous, watch this, is a jealous God. Now, look at this. Why is he saying this? We're going to get some understanding shortly. Also, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. In verse 2 look at what he says right here for i'm jealous over you but look at this with a godly jealousy for i've espoused you to one husband that's key that i may present you as a chaste virgin to who to christ so understand sister that god is married to the children of israel and i ain't talking about no christianity either so that's another topic but notice i'll give an example the children of israel were disobedient right and this is what god said here he says turn on backsliding children said the lord look at this for i'm married to you and look at this and i will take you one of a city and two of a family will bring you to zion guess what sis the children of israel made a covenant meaning a contract a league an agreement with the children of, i mean with the most high and because he did that this was a marriage all right so i'm going somewhere with this i'll give another example Jeremiah chapter 31 real quick. Look at what he says here. Jeremiah 31 and verse uh, 30. I'm going to start in 31. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So it says, Hine Yamin Naim. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Baim Naum Yehovah Bekarati. This word here. I said, I will make et Beit Yisrael, the house of Israel, Be'et, Beit Yehuda in the house of Judah, Berit Chadashah. This word here, covenant. 
What is a covenant? Covenant, alliance, a pledge. See this? This is what it actually means here, guys. A league. Got that? So he made a covenant, an agreement, a contract with the children of Israel. So it says, not a covenant to the covenant I made, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them um, to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a what? Husband unto them, saith the Lord. So he is married to them. I'm going somewhere with this. Revelation chapter 19. Look at this. Right here it says, um, and a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him both small and great. And as I heard as it was a voice of a multitude, and as the voice of many waters on my Christ, and as the voice of mighty thundering saying, hallelujah, or what you know as hallelujah or hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns, all right? It says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb, talking about Christ, is come. And his wife, which will be us, have made herself ready. Have made herself ready. All right. So when dealing with this, ladies and gentlemen, or anybody who's listening to this, I first need you to understand that God is married to his bride, the children of Israel, a.k.a. the Israelites, a.k.a. the Jews, not to be confused with Judaism, not to be confused with the people that went into the uh, went into the land of Israel. May 14, 1948, and declared Israel as a state. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the, the true Jews of the Bible, the so-called Negroes, those that are the of the transatlantic slave trade. Those people. That's another topic, though. So let's go back real quick to deal with the question that the sisters asked me because we're going to slowly go through this so we can get more context of what she's asking here. Well, so, I mean, so that she can understand her question that she's asking so it says when the god of the bible said not to put any other gods before him why haven't y'all questioned who are the other gods that he wants to be in front of so now we know that Panaya is the word mean in his presence so in the hebrew bible which predates the king james version of the bible he's saying that he don't want no other gods in his presence in his face so it would be the same to where if you say, if you being a man say to your woman, hey, I don't want no other men around you. I don't want I don't want you hanging around no other man because you mine, I'm married to you. You're mine, you belong to me. So that being said, he knew and understood that his wife was a whore. Check this out. She played the whore. Jeremiah chapter three again, verse one. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him, talking about Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4, and become another man's, shall she return? Shall he return to her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? He's talking about Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1 through 4. But look at this. But thou hast played the harlot with who? Many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Because all throughout the Israelites' history, we have always played the whore and we have always gone to worship other gods, other religions, and into other things that God told us not to do. Another reason uh, going in here, because there's so many ways to answer this, this question. Um, where we at, where we at, where we at? Uh, here we go. Uh, who are these? Uh, oh, no, no, matter of fact, it's something else I want to mention. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Something else I want to mention. Uh, Exodus chapter 23. Now, the reason why I'm going here, ladies and gentlemen, is because simply because he even tells the Israelites this it says here and all things that I've said unto you, be circumspect, me circumspect, me be watchful and make no mention of the name of other gods. Neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. That would be like he's saying, look, I don't even want you even mentioning dude's name. Don't even bring his name up at all. You get sisters today that would be like, oh, well, you know, my ex, such and such. I don't even want to mention his name. You even see that today. These same exact things. So let's get some reasons. Why would he say these things? And then we're going to ask her, who is these guys that she's talking about? I mean, that she's asking about. Um, Exodus chapter 19. And there's so many ways to deal with this question. 
So look at this. So it says, and Moses went up to God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, talking about the Israelites, you seen what I did to the Egyptians or the people of Kemet and how I carried you on eagles wings and brought you out to myself. Like you saw what I did for you. You saw how I dropped them. You saw what I did. Those who read Exodus chapter um, 13 and Exodus chapter 14, you know what he's talking about. But he says, now, therefore, if that's the key, if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, meaning my contract, my agreement, then shall you be a peculiar treasure, meaning a special treasure unto me. What? Above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a what? Holy nation. I mean, he called he called them to be a set apart nation. That's what holy means. That's what it means. So it says, these are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. So the Lord himself, that's what he told the children of Israel. You saw what I did to the Egyptians. You saw what I did to the Egyptians. And you saw how I carried you out on eagle wings. If you do what I tell you to keep this covenant, then you're going to be unto me uh, a peculiar treasure above all nations that up on the face of the earth. Uh, I can do this all day. Let's get another one real quick. Amos chapter three and verse one. It says, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. Against you. Why? Because all throughout the Israelites history, the children of Israel was always messing up. So it says, oh, children of Israel against the whole family, which are brought up from the land of Egypt saying what? You only, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for what? For all your sins. Or for all your iniquities So here it is that The Lord was dealing with the children of Israel Still is dealing with the children of Israel The Lord redeemed the children of Israel As well So let's go back to um, That post that she said And again this is the long story short So going back When the God of the Bible said Not to put any of the gods before him why haven't y'all questioned who are the other guys that he wants to be in front of? Okay, so once again, the before me, from the Hebraic perspective, that simply means not to have any other gods in his face, not to have any other gods in his presence, not to have any other gods around him. When you look at Ezekiel, the 16th chapter, you see how the children of Israel were playing the harlot of the whore by worshiping other gods. And the Lord was upset with that. Why? Because he himself took care of the children of Israel. When nobody, when everybody abandoned him, uh, the Israelites, the Lord was there. All right. Read that chapter and get some understanding. If the if, sister, if you were to get this. So it says, uh, who are these other guys that he's in competition with? Number one says he ain't in competition with nobody at all. They in competition with him. Let's deal with something right quick. Isaiah chapter 42. Oh, sorry about that. Isaiah, matter of fact, yeah, yeah, Isaiah 42, verse 9. Look at this. He says, behold, the former things have come to pass and new things do I declare or do I tell you before they happen or before they spring forth. Look at this. I tell you with them what God can do that. They in competition with him. He let you know before it even happened. I tell you with them. Let's go to Isaiah 41 and 21. It says, produce your call, said the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason and your evidence, said the king of Jacob. This is what he told them to do. Let them bring them forth, meaning their evidence, and show us what shall happen. Show us the future, past, present, and future. He says here, let them show the former things what they be, that we may even what? Consider them and know the latter end of them or declare for us what? The things to come. No other God out here doing that. Ain't no Allah doing that. Ain't no Buddha doing that. Ain't no Krishna doing that. None of these deities is doing that. Not at all. At all. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah 46. And uh, I want to start at nine. Look at this. He says here, 
Remember the former things of old, meaning the things that happened back then. Oh, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. He letting you know, ain't no other God out there like me at all. Look at this, declaring the end from the beginning. What other God did that? Told us what's gonna happen in the end times from the very beginning. No other God has done that. Ain't nobody out there like him at all. So then he say, from the ancient of times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Now, it's something I want to mention. Um, most people don't know why the so-called Negroes, the first five, the last half, the ones to be no press, were the people that is uh, at the bottom of the totem pole, basically, because we sinned against our God and we've been punished right now. That's another topic, too, that we can discuss if anybody is watching this and have any questions concerning that. But let's go back to um, the post here. Who are these other guys that he's in competition with? No other guy out there is even in competition with him at all. At all. Then he says, why have they not uttered a word against him, but he speaks on them and discredits them just so humans can look to him and him only. But sweetheart, understand that he's our redeemer. He's our redeemer. He's the one that came to save us. No other deity. Simply because the children of Israel were doing what? Worshipping other gods. And what happened because they were doing it? Check this out. There's so much I want to say on this. But I want to keep it short, sweet, and simple. Jeremiah. Chapter uh, 16. Look at this. And it shall come to pass when you shall show these people all these words. This is what the prophet Jeremiah is saying. I mean, the Lord is saying to uh, Jeremiah and they say unto him, what for have the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Cause you get people with well, God is loving God. Why he letting all these black folks, the last hire, the last, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they being oppressed. All right, so check it. Uh, what is our iniquity? What sin have we committed against the Lord our God? Then shall you say to them, because your fathers or your ancestors have forsaken me, me neglect him, saith the Lord, and have walked after what? other gods and serve them and have worshiped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law and look at this now you and you have done worse than your fathers for behold you walk everyone after the imagination imagination of his own evil heart you do what you want to do in other words that they may not hearken or listen unto me here's a prophecy therefore will I cast you out of this land that's why we're not in our original land now Look at this, that you know not, neither you nor your ancestors. And look at this, and there, meaning when you get there, you shall serve other gods day and night, while I will not show you favor. This, this was one of the punishments that the Lord gave unto the children of Israel for their disobedience. But he will restore the children of Israel, and that, again, is another topic. So, understand that he is married to the children of Israel, his people, and they went off and worshipped other guys think of it in hood terms a wife going and cheating on her husband that's exactly what the children of israel did so because he decided to marry us then he is setting the rules for his wife so look in short going back this will be like you saying when the god of the bible said not to put any other men before him why haven't y'all questioned who are the other men that he wants to be in front of? Who are these other men that he's in competition with? That's basically what you're asking. So in other words, you saying, why have they not uttered, why have these other men uh, not uttered a word against him, but he speaks on them and discredit them just so, in other words, other women can look to him and him only. That's basically what you're asking. That's, that's definitely what you're asking, basically. So this, so this man or God is coming out and saying, look, I redeemed you. I saved you. I did that for you. Ain't nobody else did that for you. I'm your man. I, I am your king. I'm your Lord. You worship me. You minds. So when you deal with, um, check this out, the book of Isaiah 43. Verse one. But now thus said the Lord that what? That created you. 
So you see that I created you, not those other deities. Why are you going to worship another deity that didn't even create you at all? Why are you going to do that for? So that being said, oh my bad, uh, wrong screen, hold on. Okay, he says, but thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed you, or fastened you, or made you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, is what he's saying. I saved you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Like, you belong to me. You better not go nowhere. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not drown you, overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall a frame even kindle upon you. For I'm the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom and Ethiopian Sheba for you. Like I gave them in exchange, I get I gave I, I dropped them in exchange for your life. You see that? I done dropped bodies for you. You mine. I killed for you. He says, since you was precious in my sight. He says, you have been honorable and I have loved you. Therefore, what, look at what he said. I give men for you and people for your life. Meaning I drop them when it come to you. You mine. He says, fear not for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather them I mean, and gather thee from the west. So he letting you know, look, I'm coming to get y'all. Y'all mine. Ain't no other God doing that for you. What you worshiping him for? He not gonna redeem you. All you gotta do is do what I say. Those who read Isaiah the first chapter already know this though. All you gotta do is acknowledge what you did wrong. See, look, one thing that I will give away cause something I'm gonna leave with homework. Isaiah chapter one. Look at what he says right here. The ox knoweth his owner and the ass of the donkey is master's crib. But look at this. But Israel, look at them, they slow. They don't know. My people don't even understand. So here it is. Everybody know who who um who they belong to except for the Israelites. That's why the sister's asking questions like this because she don't know her true owner, her true Lord, that she got to come back to and repent. Because if you don't, guess what, sis? Bible said the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach in the Hebrew language. That's what it is. Look at this. Second Chronicles. Chapter 7, verse 14. What other God is, is going to be doing this? Look at this. It says, If my people, the Israelites, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will what? Heal their land. What other deity is doing that? For us, the children of Israel, ain't no other deity doing that for us at all. Look at what he told the children of Israel here. Deuteronomy chapter 7. He says, when the Lord your God, your God shall bring thee into the land, whether you go to possess him and own it. And you have cast out many nations, all the rest of the people before thee. The Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Seven nations that are what? That are greater and mightier than you. When you don't cast them out, right? When the Lord your God bring you to a land where you finna go to own that land. Look at what he says. And when the Lord your God shall deliver them before you, look at this. You shall smite them and utterly destroy them and shall make no covenant with them nor show mercy unto them. This is what he told them to do back then. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Your, uh, your daughter thou shalt not give to a son, nor his daughter shalt thou not take unto thy son. Don't even marry them. He says right here, but they will turn away your son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you to destroy you utterly. Look at this, but thus shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars, break down their images and cast down their groves, I mean, the places of worship in other words, and burn their graven images with fire. He says here, for you are a set apart people. You different, you holy, you are cleansed. You are not unclean. 
you are holy people unto the Lord your God. Then the Lord your God of what? Chosen you to be a special people unto himself. Literally, he chose the Israelites to be a special people to him. Not equal, but above all people that are upon the first of the face of the earth. The Lord your God did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. But you were the fewest of all people. But because the, because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath of the promise which he had um, sworn unto your ancestors, the fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and saved you or redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Knowing therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant and mercy of them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So this is a few reasons why. Let's go back real quick. To all my Christians, can y'all answer something for me? When the God of the Bible uh, said not to put any of the gods before him, once again, the first commandment, why haven't y'all questioned who are these other gods that he wants to be in front of? Remember that in front of me in his presence, in his presence, in his face. That's what that means. But understand that God is literally married to those that keep the commandments, those who made a covenant with him. So as a matter of fact, speaking of that, let me go back real quick. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 5. Look at what he says here. Gather my saints together unto me. So when he says, gather his saints, all right, gather my saints, all right, Chasidai. What is he talking about here? Faithful God, holy one, kind, pious, faithful ones. See that? Holy. So gather my holy ones or set apart ones to me. So he says, um, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those who have read Exodus chapter 24, you already know what he's talking about. You already know what he's talking about. This is the long story short, though. It's so much to say. But again, whether you believe in the Bible or not, this is a question that we should know the answer to if we know anything about the Bible, though. So, again, um, when the God of the Bible said not to put any of the gods before him, why haven't y'all questioned who are the other gods that he wants to be in front of? Well, we already started off with Psalms 96, 4 and 5. That was the first part of your answer. That's your answer. Psalms chapter 96, verse four and five. He's above all gods, all right, all gods. So for example, if you look at first Kings, the 11th chapter, verse one through nine, you learn about Solomon, how he married strange women, foreign women of the nations that God told him not to deal with. And what did he end up doing? He ended up worshiping the gods of, uh, of these other women these foreign women that he had and the Lord was angry at Solomon because his heart was not perfect with uh, with uh, with the Lord as God as David was his father so it named some of the gods in that uh, chapter as well you can look at Deuteronomy the fourth chapter and learn about Baal Peor you can look at uh, Numbers chapter 25 the Lord wasn't having that he married us he don't play that that's our husband and he don't want his wife cheating on him. That's where he at with this. That's where he at with this. Literally, that's exactly where he at with it. So, look, even if you want to look at it like who he's in competition with, today you got Negroes a day that compete for the love of a woman. They compete to have favor from a woman today. Oh, yeah, girl, I, I beat dude up for you. Little Jack boys, I done shot Tommy for you. Or I done got this car to impress you. I done got this little money to impress you. He competing for that woman. He looks nice. Make sure he's dressing nice. Looking up to Paul Why? Because he's competing for the love of a woman. For the affection of a woman. You see these same things today. For these same things today. Even some of you sisters do that to compete. Y'all compete against other women today. Women who ain't even mentioned y'all name. Ain't said nothing about you. 
but y'all do the same thing to win the favor from a man. Looking nice, dressing nice, to win the favor of a person that you might desire. Even if you, I'm not looking for nobody. Y'all naturally still do that. Y'all compete on all levels to this day. Y'all do the same thing. But the Lord was saying, look, I drop everybody for you. Now come worship me. So, but check it though. This is the kicker though. What you got to understand is this. Um, Joshua chapter 24. Look at what Joshua said here. So he says, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your ancestors serve on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, so check this out. Let's go for you, sis, or anybody else. If it seems evil, choose ye this day whom you will serve. You better choose up. You better choose a side. It's a choice though. Whether the gods which your ancestors serve on the other side of the flood or the God of the Amorites and whom land you dwell or you living in. But look at what he said. Joshua made a choice though. He says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. So you see that? That was a choice. That's a choice for the Lord our God. He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way where we went and among all the people the whom we passed. You even had sister today say, well, look, Johnny ain't did nothing for me. This man right here been for me. He did X, Y, and Z for me. I'm going to love him. I'm going to follow that man. I'm not going to follow him. He ain't did nothing for me. You see this today. Same thing today. Should you abandon somebody that been through that thick and thin for you? Where your loyalty at? That's what the God of Israel want to know. That's what he want to know. Deuteronomy chapter 30. So, let's see. What do I want to start? Uh, matter of fact, yeah, here we go. It says, you know what? I'm going to just get to it right here. See, I've set before thee this day life. I mean, um, this day uh, life and good and death and evil. So, he's, there's a choice right there. You're going to choose life or you're going to choose death. He says, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord your God shall bless thee in the land with you, go to possess it. But if your heart turn away, meaning your mind, if your mind turn away from God, so that thou will not hear, but thou shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve him, I denounce on you to this day, that you shall utterly perish. You're going to be destroyed. That you shall not prolong your days upon the land. You're not going to live long, in other words. Whether thou go, I mean, whether thou pass over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Choose life. He's telling you to choose life. That's a choice, though, sis that both you and your offspring may live. Literally, that you and your offspring may live. That thou mayest love the Lord your God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou may cleave or unite to him for he is your life and the length of your days. That's who God is that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. If you don't know who Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is, time to catch up. This ain't got nothing to do with no Christianity at all. At all. It's so much to say. It's so many scriptures I can give, but understand that in short, the Lord is married to his wife and he don't want his wife to go and cheat on him. He don't want his wife to go and deal with another man, especially another man that, that ain't did nothing for his wife at all. Nothing. 
He did nothing. I mean, they did nothing for them. So check it. He told us here. In this past, in this chapter, he told us to choose life. Choose life. I call heaven and earth to record the day against you that I've set before you life and death. Which one do you choose? Which one do you choose is the question. Life, which is you choosing the most high, or death, the other gods? Which one you want to choose? The choice is yours. He ain't going to make you. He ain't going to make you do it. This ain't prison. You don't want to serve him. You don't want to be submissive. You don't want to listen to obey God. He ain't going to make you. You can choose death if that's what you want to do. Choice is yours. Miss Royal or anybody else. Choice is yours. Whoever you want to serve. Choice is yours. But if you're going to serve him, that's rule. That's order. That's structure that's coming with that. You're not going to just do what you want to do. You're going to listen and you're going to obey God. That's what you're going to do. But it is a choice, though. Choose me and choose life. Choose them, get death. Choice is thine, a.k.a. yours. So when the God of the Bible said not to be in the gods before him, why haven't y'all questioned the other gods that he wants to be in front of? Why? Look, think about it. Why should we even question it? They did nothing for us at all, at all. If you marry, why are you looking at another man? Why would a woman look at another man? Why would she do that? At all. So, who are these other gods that he's in competition with? I'm answered that. Why have they not uttered a word against him, but he speaks on them and discredits them to the, to, um, hold on, wait, how can you sit and say that? Have you not read the story of Exodus? When they was competing against God? You don't remember Exodus the seventh chapter? When he threw the rod on the ground? Go read that story. Start in Exodus chapter two and read it through chapter 14. They competed against the God of Israel. If you have the apocryphal books, 1 Maccabees, chapters 1 through 4, they competed against the God of Israel. The book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 17 to 21, they know and understand what it is. <clears throat> That's a whole nother topic. They are mentioning his name. They are. And they're trying to stop the true service of serving him. That's a lie. That's a lie. We can read that in our records, a.k.a. the Bible. We can read stories on this. They ain't want us to worship the God of Israel. People who worship me, other gods. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Let me go uh, share my screen again. Uh, where will we at? Uh, who are these other gods? Or do y'all not care to go down that rabbit hole? Uh, and fear that you, uh, you will go to hell. Look, I'm down to go down a rabbit hole. We can talk about it. We could talk about it. This is just a long story short, though. This is the long story short. Um, one second. Real quick. This is the long story short. Um, I have videos on many topics. Many topics. I have a uh, documentary that I did. Tyree, are you surprised that you did hurt people? Uh... Surprised that I did hurt people? Are you surprised? In this, uh, in the beginning of this documentary called Who's the Jews, it goes over Deuteronomy 28. It goes over the things that happened to the children of Israel for their disobedience. Us going into slavery, etc. That's a whole nother topic. God allowed us to happen because we were cheating on him by worshiping and serving other gods. This is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 15 through 68. Anybody want to know about it? Watch the uh, video, Who's the Jews? Reach out to me. I got a lot more information on that, too. Biblically and historically as well. But this is the long story short. Um, so as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the one true living God with our faith in Yeshua Mashiach, who you call today, Jesus the Christ. Uh, once again, I'm the proud author of the Unwritten Rules of Polygyny which can be found at propolybook.com. We even have merchandise as well of different colors, uh, flags and banners as well. You name it. Shoes, socks, face masks, you name it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, that's just what it is. A long story short. I need you to hear Yoram, Judah, the Shooter. Shalom.